Welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. everyone and welcome to episode 59 of the English with Kirsty podcast and today's episode is based on a question that came up in one of my lessons because we were talking about badger the word badger but not the animal that's related to the weasel in the text that we were looking at it was a verb so somebody was badgering someone and um, I needed to explain what that means and it means that you're kind of hounding them to do something you keep on at them um, you want them to do it and you keep on and on until hopefully the person says yes um, so it's, that's badgering someone or badgering someone into doing something is when you basically kind of keep on and, and hope to wear the other person down until they agree to do what you want them to or agree with you um, and because we were talking about that it made me think about some other words which are names of animals that are also parts of verbs, either a verb on their own or part of a verb phrase. So animals like fly, for a basic one, a fly flies, but so you can have fly as the um, thing that goes buzzing around in the summer, or you can fly like an aeroplane does. Um, snake, if you, um, if a river, for example, it, it doesn't flow in a straight line, it may snake through the the landscape or the the valley or the countryside um, so it's um, the verb to snake is not the creature that wriggles around it's um, a way of moving it's a line that isn't straight as a snake's body is when it's on the ground so also if you followed my wolf week on facebook or there is also a post about wolf week i'll, I'll link to that in the show notes you will know that there are lots of expressions with wolf, but like to to wolf down something. If somebody is wolfing down their lunch, they're eating it really quickly. Maybe they're really hungry or maybe they have to be somewhere. But if you wolf something down, you eat it really quickly. Maybe like a hungry wolf. I find it quite sad that some of the wolf expressions are quite negative because I think they're really cool. But to wolf down means that you eat it really quickly. Um, to ferret around is is when you're kind of looking for something you're ruffling through your handbag trying to find where your keys are um, and usually if you've got a handbag the thing that you want is right at the bottom um, so you have to go through everything and, and rummage around and that's also known as ferreting around um, rabbits i've never really understood this one because rabbits don't make any noise well they certainly don't make any loud noises but there's an expression to rabbit on, so she's rabbiting on and on and on, and it's usually someone talking and talking and talking, and it's not necessarily a good thing. You don't want to hear this rabbiting. It's just either meaningless or it's too much or it's just excessive talking, and that's rabbiting on. And as I said, I have no idea why that's like that because the rabbit itself doesn't make any noise. Um, Bugs, this one makes more sense because bugs, they are part of the food chain and animals do need them to eat, larger animals, but bugs can be quite annoying if they are, if you're trying to relax in the sunshine and they're crawling up and down you, that, that is annoying. So if someone's bugging you, then they're annoying you, they're pestering you, they're bothering you. Um, so the word bug becomes a verb and someone can bug you. Um, you may be someone who squirrels money away so rather than spending it when you earn it you squirrel it away you put it in the bank you save it because you know that at some point in the future you might need it um, in the same way that the squirrel stores food away for a later time you can squirrel money away uh, chickens they're they're not particularly cowardly they may be scared of the the fox or some other predator that wants to eat them but if you chicken out of something it means that you change your mind at the last minute and you don't go through with it it's kind of a suggestion that it's something to do with your courage you don't have enough courage to do it or you chickened out um, but it could be used in a situation where somebody had a very good reason for not doing something it's just the other person feels that they lost their courage or that they aren't strong enough or brave enough to do this thing that they were going to do 
Um, if you outfox someone, I don't know why, but the fox, has, the sly old fox has got a reputation for being sly. Um, maybe it's because it has to find ways of getting to food on its own, because generally most people don't feed the foxes, although some do. Um, so the fox has to find ways of getting to food sources so that he can survive. And maybe that's how he's become known as the, the sly fox. In a lot of children's stories, he's got this characteristics. So if you outfox someone, you're smarter than them. You outwit them. You're cleverer than them, but not necessarily in a in a an intellectual way, but in a in a way of being smart. You can get what you want, despite the other person thinking they're clever. You may be sly like the fox. So um, that one question led me to go into this whole list of animals or creatures, they're not all animals, some of them are insects, um, that also have verbs associated with them either as a verb on its own, like the bug, or um, part of an expression like to wolf your food down. So I thought that was interesting and I thought I'd share it with you. As I said, this came from a question, so if you have a question about English, a general question that you think would help other people, then you can add it to the show notes. Um, there's a form on there, so if you go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 59, there is a contact form on there and you can add your question in there. You can write to me and ask it. Okay, so I hope that was interesting and I hope you have a good week and that you have fun learning English. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes. 